The movie starts with an alarm waking Carrie from sleep. She groggily gets up and dressed in her working clothes, set to head out. Her assistant is as jolly as the season. There's a lot for Carrie to catch up with, but that's why she has upbeat Zelda to keep her up to speed. Conversation reveals Carrie runs a food distribution company, and she notifies her assistant they'll need to close work early in preparation for Thanksgiving Eve. She'll be helping her mom prepare the Thanksgiving meal, as her sister, the professional chef, will have her hands occupied with her new boo as she's bringing over. Katie, her sister, has teased the family about a big surprise she has. Carrie is almost sure it's to announce her engagement because her sister is that predictable. The assistant reminds her of some more activities she needs to get to, like coffee with her father at 5 p.m. because he wants to finalize on the Rowling Vineyard's proposal with her. The assistant expresses excitement over Katie's engagement and tells Carrie, Cupid might come for her next, so it's best to not offend him. Carrie meets with her dad and runs over the details of the pending proposal with him. He doesn't have to work so much anymore because Carrie has basically taken charge. She has a knowledgeable approach to the project at hand and asks her father if she can run the deal by herself and her father agrees that she's capable enough. Carrie reminds him the company, Emerson Food, means everything to her and he affirms but still advises that she doesn't overwork. The rest of their coffee break is all fun and ease with Carrie promising she'll do her best to keep her mother from driving Katie crazy. Carrie gets to her family home where Katie is waiting to introduce Ethan her boyfriend. He's a vendor for Katie's restaurant, supplying organic farm products like vegetables. Katie wants Carrie to come up to Napa as she hasn't been there since the restaurant's opening. She tells Carrie she's bound to love Ethan's farm and Ethan pitches that the farm is harvesting Brussels sprouts. Carrie declines the invite, excusing that she's just so swamped with work. Just then, their mother comes and announces dinner is ready. Carrie makes an annoyed face at the couple's display of affection as they leave first for the dining room. Carrie brings business talk to the dinner table. She's been trying to get Katie on the Emerson food contract, but Katie maneuvers they leave that decision for another day. Their father asks Katie to tell them what the surprise is, but Katie maintains she'll spill when the time is right. After dinner, she calls everyone's attention and first starts by saying she's thankful for her thriving business and her loved ones. She announces that she's engaged to Ethan and they'll be getting married by Christmas Eve. The dining room erupts with cheers and congratulations for the soon-to-be wedded couple. Everyone is settled around except Bitsy, who has something she needs to tell the girls. From the way she fidgets and needs her husband's support, the girls can tell their mother has breaking news. It's not an easy thing to explain, but Bitsy does her best to detail that the pressing news revolves around their grandmother's will. Their grandmother was an old-fashioned traditionalist. The sisters interrupt with old memories with their grandmother, remembering her to be quite old-fashioned indeed. Bitsy has to draw their attention back to the seriousness of the situation. Their dear grandfather left the company to their grandmother when he passed on, but she didn't believe women should run businesses and left a provision in her will, stating the company would go to the husband of whichever granddaughter that married first. Bitsy has tried every attorney in search of a loophole, but to no avail. When Katie and Ethan get married legally, Ethan will own Emerson Food. Carrie doesn't take well to the news, as she's the one currently and happily in charge of the family business. Katie is aware her sister has strong sentiments for the business and is more than willing to hand it over to Carrie. It seems like it's problem solved until Ethan's two cents suggests they can all just sleep on the decision, as Katie might be making a hasty decision on their behalf as a couple. Carrie is made to begrudgingly realize Ethan has a say in the matter. She has a fit and transfers aggression at her father, as he's the current owner of the company and never thought to mention the major plot twist. She storms out her mom going after her to calm her down. At the company, Carrie and Mark are introduced to Rowling Vineyard's independent counsel, Dylan. Carrie mentions she presumed to be meeting with one of the owners instead. Dylan emphasizes the owners he represents, only agreed to be bought because they keep the interest of their employees dear. Carrie points out Emerson Food is a family company, but Dylan opines the interests between both companies differ a significant deal. What Carrie expected to be a smooth deal quickly turns sour when Dylan starts to counter. He makes it clear that his clients want their company's character to be preserved, and they will not sell out to the first bidder because they're afraid. He calls Emerson Food's proposal ridiculous, but relents he'll consult his clients about it and get back to father and daughter. Carrie is irritated and unnerved by the time he steps out. Carrie's lawyer gets back to her that there's no way around the clause other than Ethan willingly giving the company to her. Zelda, her assistant, is present to hear vent about her life crumbling. Thinking out loud, she realizes she could get married first and devises a plan. It doesn't have to be a marriage out of love, but cooperation. Her suitable candidate would sign over the company over a period of time, and then they could get divorced. She believes she has a brilliant plan, less dramatic than confronting Ethan and Katie. Zelda begs to differ, but
but ultimately her boss tasks her with helping her search for her perfect match via dating sites. Zelda and Carrie start surfing dating sites for perfect candidates. Treating the situation with a standard business approach, she contacts the eligible ones, and after a few dates decides their plan isn't working. She complains to Zelda that she needs better ideas on how to go about it. So, Zelda wears her thinking cap, and suggests a slew of new approaches. Catching up with old pal catches Carrie's attention. She remembers a friend, Paul, from high school that she was close to. She always thought they'd end up an item at some point. She mentions she hasn't spoken to him in years, but her mom still possibly keeps in touch with his mom. She also infers that Paul stays around. Zelda pumps her up to call Bitsy and get back in touch with Paul. She invites Paul out for restaurant date and does her best to turn on the charm. He hints there must be a specific purpose Carrie reached out to him, and she plays it cool by stating she just missed having him around. She announces that Katie is engaged, and she and Bitsy will be planning an engagement party on the bride-to-be's behalf. She asks Paul if he would like to be her date at the event, and he accepts. The day of the engagement party comes, Katie approaches Carrie, wanting to know if she harbors any resentment towards her and Ethan over the will issue. Carrie assures she doesn't and apologizes if she's been a little intense lately. Ethan comes over and introduces his best pal and best man for the wedding, Dylan. Dylan chuckles at the fact that he and Katie have met before while Carrie tries to contain her irritation. Dylan states to Ethan and Katie that he's met Carrie in the boardroom. Carrie, on the other hand, is pushed to voice Dylan, is a jerk stalling a good proposal. He maintains it wasn't a very good proposal. Paul comes to Carrie's side and introduces himself as Carrie's date. He lightens the rather awkward and tense moment with his easy jokes, offering to take everyone's drink orders. With Paul off on bar attender duties, and the couple pulled away by Bitsy to greet relatives. Carrie and Dylan are left in each other's company against Carrie's wishes. They continue their alienated approach towards each other until Dylan abruptly has to leave. After the party, Katie complains about the plenty load of gifts, voicing she'd prefer a small and intimate wedding rather than a flamboyant one. Carrie makes sarcastic remarks about Katie not wanting presence and attention, then touches on the topic of their grandmother, Lucille. Bitsy quickly changes the topic by pointing out Dylan's attractiveness in the party. Carrie establishes they're working on a project together, and their encounter has been quite intense. Katie makes her admit that regardless of their differences, she does find Dylan attractive. Dylan goes to Emerson Food and finds it completely transformed with Christmas decorations and activities. He finds Carrie who's also in full Christmas spirit, dressed up in a costume, and attending to some matters. She states the company is closed up for the festive work party and asks why he's come. He clarifies he's come on some more personal business involving Ethan and his bachelor's party. The mention of a bachelor's party makes Carrie realize she's forgotten to plan a bachelorette party for Katie. Dylan suggests the bachelor and bachelorette parties can be hosted in the same vicinity to cut cost. He and Ethan have discussed it beforehand. Carrie welcomes the idea and Dylan welcomes the possibility of Carrie bringing Paul over if she wishes. He watches her in her element with some little children that approach her and smiles. He goes on to compliment her elf costume, but Carrie draws the line. She's nice enough to offer him a piece of candy before she hurriedly moves towards Mr. and Mrs. Santa Eka Mark and Bitsy. She reports to them that Dylan wanted to talk wedding preparations and was being oddly nice. Mark comments that people tend to have a surprisingly different personality than the ones we're quick to judge, and Carrie reluctantly agrees. It's the weekend of the bachelorette and bachelor's party. Carrie and her assistant have stayed late in the office. Paul will be coming to the party, once again as Carrie's date, and Carrie expresses to Zelda that she feels Paul is the perfect match. He's the perfect person to make understand what she needs him to. She tells Zelda she invited Paul to the house to set things in motion between that night and the cabin party. Zelda tries to hint at reality, but Carrie remains adamant that she can somehow make her plans go smoothly in her favor. She admits, when Zelda asks, that she hasn't come clean to Katie about her intentions because she just wants Katie to focus on her wedding. She reminds Zelda the company is what is most important to her and Katie already knows this. But Zelda tries to infer Katie would be hurt. Carrie gets defensive and basically tells Zelda to mind her own business. Zelda takes the hint. Paul comes over to Carrie's house as expected and they see a Christmas movie together. Carrie plays her romance card, saying she's cold and hoping they'll share a blanket, asking to be snuggled. She even tries to go in for a kiss but Paul seems more interested in the movie than he is in her. Carrie and Katie arrive at the cabin, where both the bachelor and bachelorette party will be held. Carrie gets introduced to Abby and Ashley who both offer services for Katie's restaurant. They all settle in the living room and Abby voices. It's brilliant that both parties are happening in the same venue. The other two ladies look forward to mingling with some very eligible bachelors. Katie asserts that she'll need Carrie to get along with Dylan this weekend as he's the best man and will most definitely be at the party. 
It's soon a full house with talks about the cake and its decoration. One of the bachelor throws a mistletoe that Dylan happens to catch. He excuses himself to go get coffee and leaves the mistletoe for Ethan who decides he can't let it go to waste. He gets all lovey-dovey with Katie with tickles and a quest for a kiss under the mistletoe. The other girls are eating up the display of affection, while Carrie decides it's time she should be anywhere else but there. She steps outside in search of a phone signal and Dylan walks into her. She voices she needs a signal to reach Paul, and he tries to step away to give her space. She stops him in his tracks, mentioning she's grateful he helped set up the getaway, and he alludes she needs the getaway with the whole fiasco revolving around her grandmother's will. Carrie gets tense learning Ethan has filled Dylan in. Dylan doesn't like how he and Carrie keep getting on the wrong foot. She insists on getting a phone signal, and he offers to drive her into town. She agrees, but when they step back into the cabin, Paul has arrived bearing good wine. Relieved, Carrie goes to greet him with a hug and a kiss on the cheek to Dylan's disappointment. Dylan returns from a hike and finds Carrie baking, not cooking. As she insists there's a difference, he came back to grab some beers and asks where Paul has gone off to. Carrie remarks she sent him off to get some sprinkles, then asks Dylan to help her with a batch of cookies in the oven. He does that and begins to apologize for the thing with Ethan. Carrie brushes off the topic and hands him a cookie that he commends. According to him, it takes him back memory lane. He used to come to the cabin more often in the past, but his grandfather passed away and so did the tradition. Carrie burns herself on the still hot pan and Dylan assists her by running water over the scalded skin. They share a longing moment, but it gets interrupted with Paul's sudden return. Carrie and Bitsy are dealing with Christmas presents when conversation strikes. Bitsy wants to know how long Carrie has been seeing Paul for and if it's a serious relationship. Carrie expresses she hopes the relationship leans in the serious direction. Then Bitsy asks what Carrie and Katie plan to do concerning the will after the wedding. Bitsy induces Katie and Ethan might decide to assert rightful ownership over the company and she would prefer if her two daughters communicate properly so things don't go sour. Carrie, seeing she's being pushed, finally agrees she'll talk with Katie. Carrie accompanies Katie to her dress fitting. While Carrie would rather keep to herself her opinions regarding Katie's dress, she has a simple solution to Katie Vale or no veil problem. She's come along with a simple solution, a flower hair piece that ties her wedding dress together quite well. Katie mentions Dylan has been asking about Carrie, and Carrie tries to be tough and dismissive, but admits he's a nice and attractive guy. She voices how he was nice to her at the cabin. Carrie is ready to change the line of discussion when Katie points she'd like to talk about the company. Katie excitedly talks about the changes they think they should make once they gain ownership. Carrie listens to her have all these sudden plans with her fiancé over a company she's built. Katie denotes she started welcoming the prospect when she and Ethan were discussing with Dylan. Even though she's never shown interest in the company before now, the mention of Ethan and Dylan in the affairs of the company only makes Carrie more mad. Mean words get exchanged and Carrie hints Katie, and Ethan might not get the company like they suddenly wish to. Carrie storms into her car and dials Zelda, reaching her voicemail. She lists a load of stuff Zelda will need to do, all which allude to she's speeding her marriage proposal to Paul so they can get married in Vegas. Sure that Zelda will receive the voicemail with a mind full of questions, Carrie warns her to keep those questions to herself and do as she's told. Zelda saw through with securing the reservations at the restaurant of Carrie's choice at their table for two. She mentions to Paul that the owners of the restaurant are friends with her parents and Katie's rehearsal dinner will hold there. She elucidates she and Paul must be having fun and admits she's not the most subtle person. Paul agrees that she isn't but states it's fun to watch her try. She's more practical than anything. He notices she seems tense and keeps taking one too many sips from her flute, so he asks if she's okay. She summons up she's gotten a jet ready to Vegas and has booked them a suite. She proposes to him and he reveals he's gay. After she gets over the shock, she insists they can overlook his sexuality, but he retains it's not something he wants to overlook. Carrie laments about Katie and Ethan about to take everything from her and maintains she and Paul can get married on her behalf, then go their separate ways after the papers have been signed over to her. Paul presses he wants a marriage out of love and respect for his sexuality. A now drunk Carrie gets bitter and makes an offensive comment on Paul's sexuality. Upset, he decides to call it a night and leaves after Carrie denies wanting a cab. She ends up with dessert for two at the bar and decides to drunk call Dylan. He manages to get her current location from the bartender and arrives to meet a drunk to stupor Carrie. Drunk Carrie is a lot to handle, blabbering about how they should get married to put Katie in her place. She unintentionally mentions she finds him attractive and is the typical intoxicated person with too much to say. He gets her home and puts her through changing into her pajamas. She's more animated than he has ever seen and it makes him chuckle a lot. At some point, she goes in for a kiss but ends up blacking out across his shoulder and amused Dylan hoists her and tucks her in bed. He helps himself to one of her cookies by the door as he leaves. Carrie turns in for work the next day, hung over. Zelda can tell her boss had quite a night with a tired look on her face. Carrie complains that she can't find her phone. 
She acknowledges that she feels utterly petrified by her actions leading to the current moment. She informs Zelda the proposal to Paul didn't work because Paul is gay. She concedes that Katie and Ethan will have the company, as she has no tricks up her sleeve. Zelda tries to make her understand that nothing has to change, regardless of who owns the company. She wants to make Carrie understand that she was never the owner of the company and still worked dutifully in it, so Emerson Food can still be the same welcoming environment even with new owners. Carrie doesn't see it that way, hammering that her intentions were to own the company and not answer to anyone. Feeling apprehensive, she brushes Zelda off, asking that she would just like to get to work. Dylan comes to see her in the office with her phone, and Carrie is surprised to see he has it. He realizes she doesn't recall last night and dutifully reminds her with several chuckles. Carrie is mortified that he likely helped her change into her pajamas. He points out she's the one who drunk called him. Carrie gets apprehensive, even though he was only trying to help and Dylan leaves, feeling closed off and hurt, stating he likes her better when she's drunk. When he's gone, she burst into tears and Zelda steps in with tissues to comfort her. Carrie asks Zelda why she didn't try to stop her making a total fool out of herself and Zelda affirms she tried to stop her. Carrie starts to have a mental breakdown. She wails about how everyone hates her including her sister and Dylan, even Paul. She expresses she wouldn't be able to face Katie at her rehearsal dinner because she's been rather rude. All she wanted was to own the company, and now she's losing everything else. Zelda proves to be her backbone in the moment, reminding Carrie she's still very much in control of her life. She rushes over to a hyperventilating Carrie, takes her hand, and coaches her into breathing again. Carrie arrives at the rehearsal dinner in a better form, rocking a black dress and skin, not as pale from a hangover. Ashley and Abby rush over to her with the air of gossip. Seems they both sense Paul was already gay and knew Carrie's efforts were futile from the onset. They make her realize she was very mean to Katie about her dress, and Carrie admits she owes her sister an apology. While they're discussing, Dylan enters the room. Ashley literally pushes Carrie in Dylan's direction, so she bumps into Dylan. Carrie apologizes for tripping into him, and he apologizes if he possibly crossed the line the other night. She acknowledges all he was trying to do was help, and thanks him for that. At the table, Dylan gives a heartwarming speech about the significance of love and wanting to experience it for himself. He appreciates that his friend has found it, and he gets to be in proximity to such blessing. Carrie takes Katie aside and apologizes for the way she's been acting. She admits she tried to get Paul to marry her because she wanted ownership of the company. She mentions she's been mean to Dylan and feels bad about it because she actually likes him. Katie remarks Ethan and her will step away from ownership if it would make Carrie happy and bring peace. Carrie states that's not what she wants, and this confuses Katie. Katie has a rehearsal dinner to get back to, and Carrie states she'll return in a minute. She's left alone, pondering deeply on what she actually wants. Carrie returns to the office from the rehearsal dinner and makes a call to someone. On the day of the wedding, both Carrie and Katie are dressed up. Katie is nervous for her big day, but she has her sister to reassure her everything will be okay. Carrie hands over an envelope to Katie, holding her letter of resignation. Katie doesn't like this as she knows Emerson food means a lot to Carrie. She reiterates that she and Ethan will rather step aside than hurt her. Carrie points out she's been hard on Ethan and should give him a chance. She knows her sister and brother-in-law will do what's best for the company, and they're entitled to all the possibilities they have concerning what is rightfully theirs. Katie is once again confused, but Carrie explains she's ready to take a different path in life. Mark and Bitsy join them, and they all have a family moment of belonging and thrill. Katie notes she's about to start the rest of her life, and Carrie muses that she understands what that means. The wedding is an intimate one, with a few number of family friends. It's an evening outdoor event with warm Christmas lightning. Dylan, with a thoughtful smile, watches Carrie walk down the aisle. Paul shows up for the reception and approaches Carrie, stating she looks good. Carrie remarks she has a reputation for being difficult, but Paul wants it all behind them. He leads her into a dance, long enough for Dylan to come and ask to cut in. Paul obliges, giving Carrie and Dylan room to talk. Turns out Carrie is the new CEO of Rowling Vineyards and Dylan will finalize the contract details on the coming Monday. Carrie lets on she's sorry for how she's treated Dylan and excuses the tense situation as she's usually not so brutal. Dylan expresses he likes her but isn't trying to come between her and Paul. She clarifies she and Paul are just friends. They discuss the magic of her cookies. Then Carrie comments Dylan gave a touching speech at the rehearsal dinner, relaxed in each other's arms. They move gracefully to the soft tune of the piano and share a kiss. 